Welcome to Game Plan. I'm here with Dr. Shin Young, or AKA The Doc. Uh, how are you? I'm doing great. Pleasure to meet you. What kind of doctor are you? I'm a neurologist. I mostly do sleep medicine. I'm double board certified. That's So that's, I treat mostly patients with sleep apnea. People, what, what's the optimal time that you need to sleep? Um, depends on the person, but anywhere between six to eight hours is a healthy amount of sleep. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, w at what age does it start changing? Well, as we age as a child, we usually hit the six to eight hour mark. Uh -huh. um, then when we get older, we start losing high quality sleep. So um, there's some disturbance in sleep with no normal aging. I, I've, I've noticed it recently. I've been monitoring my sleep no. and I'll, I'll see on the monitor how I wake up, you know, and I never used to, I sure. had no clue that I did that. And now I'm aware of it. Well, I don't, as, I don't as know if age, it's good or bad that I know yeah. that I do it. Well, as you age, you may just have some uh, vulnerabilities for poor sleep that you didn't have when you were uh, younger. Um, you're probably still healthy, um, but as we age, sometimes our uh, sleep patterns change a little bit. doesn't mean you're abnormal. What's the best way to get the best results, sleep results? Well, basically sleep is a reflection of how healthy you are. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, your mind, your body, so if you have a healthy mind, you don't have a lot of anxiety, you don't have a lot of stress, no depression, your sleep improves. If you're physically healthy, if you have a good nutrition, stay well hydrated, exercise, then you also improve your sleep. So healthy brain, healthy body, better sleep. Better sleep. Would you say, do you live longer if you sleep more? Well, it's, uh, it is a part of aging well. Uh -huh. So if you invest in good sleep habits throughout your life, on top of it, nutrition, exercise, and cutting out some, uh, some of the negative things like drinking too much alcohol, smoking, mm -hmm. uh, getting um, exposure to toxins mm -hmm. and, and um, not just chemical, but maybe um, environmental um, negative psychological stress. Those things can all make you age less well. So sleep is definitely a part of it. But um, the wonderful thing about sleep is you can always improve your sleep by being healthier. So it's, a, it's kind of a circular thing where if you sleep better, you're healthier. But if you're healthier, you actually sleep better. So it's hard for people to know where to start. I'm, to I'm, their I'm sleep. so into this right now. I'm really trying to figure it out because everything that I'm reading is, is sort of revolving around sleep. Sure. And um, it's a hot topic, right? It's now. a hot topic. And, and I, so I've been measuring my sleep. I'm, I'm maybe right at six hours, if not less. And, uh, you know, I, I don't think. I could definitely be getting better sleep. The thing is, you have to be mindful of what you're measuring sleep with. If you're using your Fitbit or your Apple mm -hmm. Watch, that um, measurement of sleep is not actually sleep, maybe. It's heart rate, it's movement, it's basically how quiet your body is. So yeah. if you wanted to, you yeah. could just lie still yeah. and have <laughs> your true. Fitbit say, boy, you slept fantastic, yeah. but you yeah. were just lying still. Yeah. So you have to be very mindful about what tools you use to measure sleep. Okay, okay. But there's gotta be, I've gotta be within a certain percentage, right? Sure, so uh, if you're a Navy SEAL, you can get by with four hours of sleep, no problem. If you and are- Health-wise too, you, you're yeah. good on four hours. So, you know, people that are uh, good with less hours of sleep, they actually gravitate towards certain work, like Navy SEALs, they may be um, stock traders, yep. they wake up early. Yep. That's, I, that's part know. of the reason why I wake up. I, I wake know. up at 6.30 LA yeah. time. So basically you the market. Do figure out what, how many hours of sleep you need. Basically don't set a clock, don't get an alarm, yeah. just go to sleep when you feel sleepy and measure that sleep over time with no restrictions. You have no commitments. You can sleep when you're sleepy and wake up when you naturally wake up. And over time, you can have a feeling of how many hours your body actually needs. Yeah. But this is basically uh, when you are mentally and physically at a kind of a steady point mm -hmm. where you're not stressed out, you're not, you're not going through a dietary change or anything like that. So everything's kept equal except you're just trying to measure what your normal sleep time should be. Got it. Uh, what, would you say no electronics in the bedroom? 
if you want to achieve better sleep, yes. <laughs> okay. Although, so no checking your phone yeah. for at least an hour before bed, mm -hmm. no TV in the bedroom. Yeah. So the bedroom should be for two things. It should be for sleep and sex. Boom! And if you're doing sex correctly, Somebody you probably sleep it. better too. Oh, I like that. Bit, that goes into the health department, right? That's right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I also, I know you're a dear friend of our founder um, and CEO, Alan Stevens. Yes. And um, <laughs> look at this talk. And uh, so you're a good friend of Alan Stevens, our CEO at COS, and he told me the story of how you lost 40 pounds using COS and Peloton riding bikes. Sure. So walk um, me through it. How's it happen? I've known Alan for many years now. Mm -hmm. So uh, we met through our kids' preschool, mm -hmm. and we were at a potluck, and uh, it turned out that. We knew each other from years ago when I was a waiter at a restaurant and he actually used to frequent that restaurant. Like this is like 20 years ago. So we made this reconnection at the preschool. Uh, he's, he's been an entrepreneur so he had all these different ventures but one of his most recent venture was uh, in the, um, not necessarily the health industry but uh, in protein. Mm -hmm. So he was trying to improve his health, he lost a bunch of weight and he was feeling healthier and um, during that time, I wasn't really uh, paying t attention to my health as much, and uh, he was giving me all these products, all these uh, proteins, and I had it on my shelf for a long time. I would use it once in a while when I was uh, feeling like doing a protein shake, but I wasn't really taking it very seriously. And um, last year, I was watching this movie called um, Free Solo. Yeah, So movie. that movie was so fantastic in, in many aspects. But one of the things that really struck me was the main, main person in that movie, the guy that yeah. you know, free soloed El Capitan, yeah. he's five foot 10 and 158 pounds, roughly. Yeah. And I was five foot 10 and almost 220 pounds. So I was watching that movie thinking that I was you know, 40, 50 pounds heavier than this guy. Yeah. No way can I climb you know, a wall with my fingers. Yeah. And this guy climbed basically this gigantic mountain with, yeah. with his bare hands. So I was just sitting there, 50 years old, 40, 50 pounds overweight, compared to Alex, who's, who, who did the free solo. Yep. I was just not feeling healthy. So I had this protein sitting at my house, and I was thinking, I have something at home that I can improve my health right away. Um, and what do I do to combine all the things I know as a physician to improve health? Mm -hmm. Nutrition, exercise, modification of what type of nutrition you're getting, and um, you know, trying to incorporate what I need for, for my type of metabolism, my type of uh, body type. Yeah. So it wasn't until my nurse, um, who is not really overweight, but she just wanted to be thinner, was doing the Atkins diet. Uh -huh. So she would come into work uh, every day saying, boy, this Atkins diet doesn't really work very well. I'm not really losing that much weight. I'm not seeing the results I want. Was she, was she going to the gym as well? She was following She was. Up. She was going to the gym. She was eating mostly protein. Uh -huh. I think all protein, actually. So she was very frustrated. And as a joke, I actually told her, you know what? I am going to do exactly the opposite of you. So I'm going to eat nothing but ramen, pasta, <laughs> rice. My kind of guy, yeah. <laughs> so I went all carbs. Yeah. And okay. I said, you know what? I think what's happening is calorie count. So I restricted my carbs to about 1,800 calories. Mm -hmm. And uh, I saw results right away. So I was losing some weight, not a tremendous amount, but I was losing weight while the Atkins diet for uh, my nurse wasn't really producing the results she wanted. I think the key was, was calories. So I was losing weight eating all this junk food, basically. Mm -hmm. I was thinking, why don't I just change my nutrition? Not diet, because diet is temporary. Yeah. You change your diet, you lose some weight. But well, how do I change my nutrition and lower my calorie count and lose a bunch of weight and be healthier? I'm sitting at 50, feeling horrible. Yeah. Uh, so what I decided to use my friend's product, which was available, I had tons of it at home. Yeah. And my gym at that time also got a Peloton. Okay. That's pretty popular, it's yeah. these, um, these um, spin classes you can I get know. on at any time. I've done it, yeah. 
So my so basically it was like different combination of things coming together. My gym got a Peloton. I had all this cost in my um, home, and I needed to lose weight. My wife was also gone out of the country because she took my son to um, uh, a language class that was outside of the country. Yep. So she was going to be gone for two months, and I could do basically anything I wanted yeah. nutritionally. Yeah. So I started to do, incorporate all the things that were very popular in 2019, which was intermittent fasting, mm -hmm. don't eat breakfast. That was how I um, kind of incorporated into yeah. my diet. So don't eat breakfast, and I had seven to eight hours of uh, food intake mm -hmm. that I could eat. And I also incorporated an 1,800 calorie limit. So at work, I have uh, work-related lunches, there's um, different meetings I have to go to, and lunch is usually provided. Yep. So I have less leeway on what I can choose. So I was thinking, boy, I'll eat about 1,000 calories then. Then for snacks, a few hundred calories, and I would replace one meal with cost, which is, it says right here, 20 grams of protein, 170 calories. Yep. And to make it tastier for me, in the beginning, I would, I would mix it with you know, like dairy products, like milk or something. Yep. But later, I, I just use water and sometimes use oat milk, and that was about um, maybe two to 300 calories Got it. in total. So I was sometimes keeping it under 1800 calories. I was also doing Peloton, 30 to 45 minute um, uh, training sessions with my favorite uh, trainer. Once, uh, once a day? From, she's from Philadelphia. Okay. Miss Robin, yeah. who uses bad is it, words. Is this, which a, is this you. a shout out to Miss Robin? <laughs> She motivates me. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. I tried I, I, all the instructors, I and I respect it. You know, when I, you're absolutely when you're when you're going those, hardcore on the bike, those guys have a great energy. Um, it's she, next level. She uses some adult it. words that makes you, yeah, you know, put your ass in gear, increase right? your wattage. I bet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so a combination of Peloton every day. Yeah. One day off. That's usually what they recommend. One mm -hmm. day off, and replacing dinner with cost, and eating whatever I wanted to a certain limit. During the day, what, what you say, whatever you wanted, but what what did that consist of? What were you being like diligent so, about? Just greens, or because I was concentrating on calories, I could get it from anywhere. So a slice of pizza could be okay. eight hundred calories. Okay, uh, a, you know, hot dog is six hundred calories. Yeah, uh, I get it. A uh, plate of pasta could be a thousand. So um, I could eat anything I wanted, except um, I wanted to keep the calories to a certain amount. Got it. That's much easier. Did you did you see a difference? Sometimes I feel a difference when I eat a pizza compared whether it's you know 400 calories of pizza yeah. and whether it's 400 calorie salad. I feel like my body burns it cleaner. And I'm again sure. not a doctor, sure. <laughs> so sure. But did you notice anything like that? Well, being a doctor, I'm not a nutritional <laughs> expert either. <laughs> so it. so um, what's true is all the foods that taste good yeah. uh, have you know. Certain things in common. If you watch the Food Channel, there's there's not a lot of mystery about what tastes good. It's yeah. salty, yeah. it's sweet, or it's fatty. Yeah. If you combine all three, it tastes freaking Amazing. awesome. <laughs> so it's hard for you to go from a poor diet and avoid all those things because it's 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 kind of like a food addiction where if you stop eating all those things all at once, you actually feel worse, right? Yeah. So. You just have to kind of limit your exposure to some of the foods that taste good because things that taste good, I, I, our body actually I, needs. I know, yeah, right? yeah. But the thing is, if you say, you know, salads are good, you can run into trouble. Like uh, there's a avocado chicken salad at a popular restaurant. Yeah. That's, you know, doused 1,600 and, yeah, calories. I get it. And doused it's and it's an avocado chicken salad. All that stuff, right? Yeah. So salad, if you make it taste good, it's horrible for you. Yeah, because it's got croutons in it. It's got bacon bits. Yeah, but that's what I mean. I would avoid. I would avoid all. I avoid a lot of carbs. Mm -hmm. You know, I avoid the pasta and the sure. the bread stuff uh, because I know I'm I'm actually eating it in some way, shape, or form. But I would purposely avoid it whenever it's it was so obvious. Sure. Uh, sure. But that's like a little trick I play with myself. Yeah, do, you, do you feel? Better if you're eating cleaner. Basically. Yeah, yeah. You know? There's some. I don't know. You yeah. know. There's something to it, though. I feel like it burns cleaner, and, and yeah. I have a little more en energy, and I'm less heavy. Yeah, I'm a little lighter. So after I got into Peloton, you know, I I was interested in um, taking that outside and road biking. Yeah. And I was watching videos of professional cyclists, and yeah. they eat a lot of carbs. Yeah. Yeah, you're like, right. 
pre-race, they load up on carbs. Yep. After training, they, they eat carbs. So carb has a place, Definitely. but for people to simplify their lives, um, you know, having a system usually works. That's why Weight Watchers works. It's, it's That's so why Atkins works. That's why, you know, Jenny Craig works. Yep. All those things work because it's a system. Yeah. And you have to kind of... Is that what you de you kind of started developing? I know you yeah. had time on your own. So did you develop a system for yourself that so worked? I just researched a lot of things where... I researched a lot of things to see what would work for me and what I could adhere to. Uh -huh. Because the key to staying healthy is consistency. So if you can constantly um, do something that's healthy, you will actually stay healthy. Yeah. So what is wrong with most people is they make temporary changes. You know, I, you know, I'll do, I'll do lettuce wrap yeah. when I go to a burger place. I'll um, avoid um, bread before the meal comes and yeah. I'll cut back on alcohol. Those things sometimes are temporary. So once you go back to those things, they usually gain the weight back. So most heavy people have lost enough weight they should be at weight zero because yeah. you know a 400 pound person lost more than 400 pounds in their lifetime. They just keep going yeah, back and forth. Yeah, yeah, it, it, yeah. I've seen <clears throat> it. Oh, so when you, I know, I know you have must have a crazy work ethic with being a doctor, and you've you've gone through you know some so much schooling and and actual work where you're doing due diligence non nonstop. Did you apply that same mentality into health and fitness? No. That's no. why I was so fat. Really? <laughs> I didn't really know. You know, just because you're a doctor doesn't mean you're healthy. Yeah, but you usually I, tell people, other people what to do. I, but I figured you would have that, that work ethic to be able to jump right into the health, health yeah. and, and fitness and nutrition yeah. right away. So what I delve into, what I kind of, you know, the tools I knew what to do was, if I have a goal in front of me, I know how to accomplish it. Yeah. And I will um, do anything possible to accomplish that goal. So um, I need to get into medical school. I need to get all four O's. I need to pass this test. I need yeah. to you know, interview well and get into a med school. You know, those, all doctors know what to do when, when they're confronted with the goal. You know, I have to you know, treat this patient. I have to keep this person alive. Yeah. So we're basically goal-oriented. We're organized. and. Um, and we're somewhat smart too. <laughs> yeah. But nutrition is something that a lot of doctors don't even know because you know, how many doctors it. do you see that are severely overweight? Right? Not severely overweight, but, but I, I, but, I, but I there's a lot of doctors that still smoke. There are yeah. a lot of doctors that, Yeah, I know. can't tell you that many that I know. And I know a decent amount of doctors. I don't know that many who are in that great of shape. No. And, and, I, and, I, and I chalk it up to, they must be stressed out, they have a lot of work at hand, they're saving lives for Christ's yeah. sake, how can you blame them? Yeah, but sometimes we don't practice what we preach. preach. Yeah. So I was sitting there, 30, 40 pounds overweight, telling my patients that are 200 pounds overweight to lose weight. Yeah. Telling them yeah. these suggestions about what to do, yeah. and I'm not really hearing it to my, you know, really incorporating to my life. Was, it, was that a good amount of your patients? Were, <clears throat> were they overweight? So I treat mostly patients with sleep apnea yeah. because that's the most common sleep disorder. Yep. And some of these patients are 150 to 300 pounds overweight. Yeah. I have patients, you know, that are over 500 pounds. I have a chair in my office in my in my exam room that's rated for 500, 550 pounds. Got it. So uh, when I called the manufacturer to see if I can get the 600 pound chair, uh -huh. they said there is no such chair because those people can't walk anymore. Interesting. So wow. if you're 550 pounds, every time you get up, you're dead squatting, what, 300 pounds, 400 yeah, pounds? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's a lot, so of, how, a lot of weight how can on you, your knees. So they said, you know, you're fine with the 550 pound chair. How, how, what, what's the percentage of your patients who are overweight, who have sleep apnea? You know, my patients, basically, they uh, represent the U.S. average, which is about 30% of the U.S. population is overweight enough to be unhealthy. Mm -hmm. yeah, so that's 35% of my patients. And because I run a sleep clinic with lots of sleep apnea patients and, and obesity being one of the risk factors for sleep apnea, I say about 50% of my patients are overweight in an unhealthy range. Yeah. And, yeah. and would you say that's... That, how much of that is the cause of sleep apnea? It is 
it is one of the major risk factors that's growing because yeah. we are becoming more obese as a society, but there's a, kind of a complex mixture of, uh, of um, sleep apnea risk factors. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, I have sleep apnea, I use a CPAP, yep. but uh, when I lost weight, um, I discovered I still had symptoms. And I was thinner way back when mm -hmm. in college and I still had symptoms. Got it. So, so you know, losing weight helps, but it yeah. doesn't always my, resolve the sleep apnea. My 80 year old great uncle who's in great shape, sure. and he's got sleep apnea. Yeah. So it could be your tongue, it could be your jaw, mm -hmm. it could be, you know, uh, anatomy that's way back there. So yeah. It's not, but if you're overweight and have those risk factors, your sleep apnea is much worse. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. But, um, but I tell my patients, you know, just because you're heavy doesn't mean you're not in good shape. You know, the whole NFL is based on these big guys that are, those guys can outrun us. Yeah, but I know part of the NFL, yeah. they, uh, what they lobby for is having a better, you know, basically severance package that includes them getting back into sure, shape in sure. order to maintain for the rest of their lives because they put on oh, all yeah. this muscle it's, and weight it's, to play. It's not, and it's not sustainable. Yeah. So if you're a sumo wrestler, you're in great shape, you can power through a tournament and win the championship. Yeah. But you can't sustain that weight and stay healthy yeah. for the rest of your life. Yeah. So they're, you know, Olympic athletes come in all different shapes and sizes. The, the heavy lifters are usually big guys, but, um, you know, how healthy they are. Health is kind of, it's, it's tied into weight. But if you think about it, you know, if, you, if you're a heavy person and you're not healthy, in space where you weigh zero, you're still unhealthy. Yeah. If you're healthy here on Earth, you go to space, you're still healthy, but weight is zero. So weight is not a measurement of health. It's just a reflection, right? I mean, you, you just, I'm, <laughs> that, was, that was out of this world. Right, my son and I went to the science uh, museum in Seattle. Yeah. And uh, there was a scale where you stand on it and it tells you your weight in every planet in the solar system. Oh, interesting. So on the sun, I think he was 2,000 pounds. On Earth, he was 65. Uh, I think Mar there, there were all these weights in different planets, right? Yeah, that's next so level. That's how healthy you are, how healthy you are, like this, yeah. uh, your weight here has no bearing on you know, your weight on Mars, but your health may be the same, right? Yeah. So, yeah. so we, we have this mentality that weight is, is um, what's going to make us healthy. But there's plenty of skinny people that are super unhealthy. That's true, so, very true. So what I tell patients uh, is your weight is a reflection of your health. Mm -hmm. So if you're healthier, your weight should be in a zone that's healthy also. Yep. But to get obtain a certain weight may not be your goal. So I've lost a bunch of weight. Yeah. But how do you feel? I feel much better. I sleep better too. Yeah. <laughs> and just so that you you feel lighter on your feet. You need, yeah. Do your knee? Did your knees ever hurt from being so, overweight? So I'm turning 51 in two more weeks. And I feel better now than I did 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. Because I'm also doing things that are different. I, I, I'm, I road bike now, I go to the gym more often, um, I eat more nutritious food, I, I eat less portions, I stay away from foods that are um, unhealthy. What's your guilty pleasure? Uh, anything fried. Anything, anything <laughs> fried. For anything. A cardboard fried, that tastes good too. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. Donuts, How fried chicken. Stop it. Yeah. yeah. I really want to open up a chicken tender place some point in my life. And I know it's like the worst thing because I'm just going to sit there and eat it all day. Mm, as long as you keep it under uh, 1,800 calories a day, you'll be fine. There's got to be a way to, they'll come up with a way to better fry that stuff. So with guilty pleasures uh, with food, um, it's, it's a, there's a diminishing margin of return. So the perfect example is ice cream. Yeah. So ice cream, I love ice cream. Same. Uh, I'm semi-lactose intolerant. Same. So it's, it's, <laughs> Same. it's dangerous, I still, I still but I still love it. So you, you can't have something, you gotta have some, right? Yeah. So ice cream is a perfect example of significant, steep, decreased marginal return for how much my ice cream you're eating. So the first bite is fantastic. The second bite is slightly fantastic. Then by the third bite, your tongue is slightly frozen. So you're not really tasting anything anymore, but you're still eating it because it's there. Uh huh. So if you're really into ice cream, yeah. I would suggest you eat very tiny scoops throughout the day to optimize your pleasure 
um, uh, meter. Wow. I've right? never heard somebody break down ice cream like that. So in, like when you go to a fancy restaurant and mm -hmm. they give you a sorbet for, um, for um, your kind of a palate cleanser, yeah. they, they want that flavor in maximum bursts of, of you know, margin return. So, and then you move on to something else. They, don't, they never give you like, okay, here's your yeah, five true. scoops of yeah. sorbet. Absolutely. So, you know, uh, very, very powerfully um, uh, registering, you know, foods that, you know, are memorable yep. and taste great and makes you feel fantastic. They come in small portions. Yeah. I just if, you, if you overdo it, you're actually not not enjoying it more. It's funny. I, I just had a 20 course meal at a restaurant, some Michelin star restaurant. And I really don't like Michelin star restaurants because I never feel full at the end of it. So it's not my thing. But you enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. But by the end, when I had to recalibrate and yeah, think, yeah. how was this actual experience? I was like, you know what? I'd rather just like a nice big portion <laughs> sure. of like one thing, pound sure. it, Sure. I, there's so, I think we all be, start getting accustomed mm -hmm. to having that full belly mm -hmm. and you're like, oh, I'm full and that was good because yeah. your belly's yeah. so full yeah. when that's part of the problem. We, we, so, know, I, we're sitting there overeating. Yeah. That, I have this concept where, where you know, f fullness is like 50% mental yeah. and 50% physical. Yeah. So if, you, if you're hungry and I give you a cost protein shake, yep. you're no longer hungry yeah. physically. Yeah. It's true. Your stomach is not growling anymore. Yeah. You don't, you're not in pain anymore. Yeah. You, don't, you don't have any discomfort. But mentally, you're not full. Because yeah. mentally, you're saying, yeah. I just had a small cup of cost shake, and I need something else. I need more satisfaction. So some people, they, they're not satisfied with one slice of pizza. A slice of pizza could be 800 calories. No way. I got to eat at least three quarters of it. So. 800 calories could be a meal. If you're, if you're on a 1800 calorie nutritional restriction, that slice of pizza is a meal, but mentally you're not satisfied. Absolutely. So mentally you go to the second yeah. and the third yeah. and fourth La slice. Last night I had, a, um, I had a tuna wrap that was wrapped in lettuce from, and, then, uh, from, and then I had vegetables. And then I had like a melee of vegetables. And after, of course, I'm, I have a sweet tooth. I'm like, I gotta eat. <laughs> Got to get some one more thing in. Sure, I got room, sure. and yeah. so thank God I went straight to Cos the the new peanut butter flavor. Yeah, I'm I'm addicted to. And I did two and scoops. You don't have to feel guilty about yeah. it. Yeah. Two scoops of peanut butter. I actually drank three quarters of it, yeah. and I was totally satisfied with my sweet tooth. Mm -hmm. I, I felt full, but I wasn't miserable. Mm -hmm. You know, that, and that's 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 really the worst thing for me personally. I eat until I'm miserable. Okay. And so that's what I'm trying to stay away from. Yeah, you should have been a competitive eater or something. I, 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 I th <laughs> of course, I'm all self-diagnosed, but I think I have an enlarged uh, stomach. Yeah. You know? Plus with the I good metabolism, maybe. I mean, I'm definitely going to the gym four or five days yeah. a week. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm staying busy. I'm always mixing up the exercises, sure. not getting stagnant to keep the body guessing. As I've gotten older, especially these past couple of years, I've definitely started to hold fat in my lower back. It's the yeah. first place for a male yeah. to hold fat. Sure. So now I'm getting more and more conscious over yeah. the past couple of years of, of eating to that e yeah. extreme, yeah. you know? And, and for me, same the cost greens is also my go-to yeah. and i feel f i i physically am full my yes. taste buds are are satisfied mm -hmm. after a drink of greens mm -hmm. um and the taste and the taste is great but but it's true we get into a habit of, of this sure. and sure. so sure that's like always going mm -hmm. through our mind of oh man I, my mouth didn't chew yeah. in the past five hours but if you think about Food. Food is just fuel. It's it's kind of like gasoline. So when when people get excited about food, that's mm -hmm. like someone you know a, a car getting excited about okay oh shell gasoline yeah oh my god that's so delicious yeah compared to Chevron or something right that doesn't make any sense. So what I notice as a physician about patients that are super healthy and people that are not super healthy, 
healthier people, especially athletes, they think of food as more like fuel. Yeah. You know, I, I need to go do a 40 mile ride. I need this many calories. I need the carb row, uh, load now. When I'm on the road over 90 minutes, I'm going to have to do uh, uh, like a gel yeah. of, of calories. They're thinking about food as fuel. Yeah. They're not thinking about f- food as, oh my God, I'm going to enjoy this. Yeah. I'm going to do this when watching this. And I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to get two portions of that. Yeah. They never think that way. Yeah. Now, the average person that's not an athlete will never think that way. But we should try to incorporate some of that attitude towards food as fuel, as energy. Basically, it's gasoline. So if one gallon of gas and one, another gallon of gas, basics should be the same. Yeah. So if you don't feel satisfied because you consume 1,000 calories, but the, it's the calories that didn't taste that great, but we still have those calories to do what we need to do, yeah. I think we need to change that mentality. You have, no one can change it except you. You have to switch it in your brain yeah. and say, you know what, I just had the calories I need to go fuel my body. It didn't matter that there was no bacon on it, Yeah. right? So that, that's my next thing. Do you think that it's, I mean, what do you think about the, the nutrition t- in our school systems these days? There's been some improvements over the last decade or so, uh-huh. but I think we're going in an opposite direction. But it all depends on who's in charge. Like, are nutritionalists in charge of school lunches? I don't think so. It's, yeah. it's bureaucrats. And, yeah. and we also have to be mindful of Perfect. cost too, right? Yeah. You know, if you consider ketchup a, a vegetable, we save a little money. Yeah, it's true. It's true. <laughs> what uh, I, I want you to walk me, walk me through your game plan now. I I know, I know what it was to get where you're at now. Sure. But now, what do you do to maintain? So, you know, I am a full time physician. Yeah. I don't, uh, and I have a ten year old son, so uh, I have to balance work life and family life, just like a lot of people mm-hmm. that are struggling to stay healthy. So I decided to. Um, change my diet and exercise, which is basically the foundation of healthy living. But how you do that has to work around your lifestyle, right? And, your, and the time restrictions. So um, cost is great because I can re- replace it very quickly with one meal a day. I know exactly how many calories there are and it has a lot of nutrition involved. So um, I'm not withholding any um, vital nutrition or anything I need. And exercise is important, but I don't have time to go to the gym for like three, four hours a day. Three, so, four hours. <laughs> you know, You're just to, hard work. To get cut, you know. <laughs> yeah. So basically I said, well, I'm going to do Peloton. Okay. Which um, unfortunately was at the gym I was at and I had all this protein around. So I incorporate those two things. Do and you have one at the house now? No, I, I, I go to a different gym now, but I use the Peloton digital app, which is just as good as having got the Peloton it. bike. Oh, you're setting yeah. up the phone right there. Yeah, the and I, I got a cadence meter that uh, is on my biking shoe, and basically it's the same thing, um, okay. and it's really good. And my instructor, Robin's still on there, so it's And good. you're only you're hitting that ex- instructor every Oh, yeah. yeah. Four or five days a week. Yeah, hip-hop rides. That's good. Hip-hop rides. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't so, expect you for a hip-hop uh, guy, Doc. Yeah, Peloton, nice. uh, about three to 400 calories every time I go, uh-huh. five days a week, uh, replacing uh, some meals with costs. That's kept my weight at a reasonable amount. So now that I've really taken this Peloton biking thing outdoors, doing road biking, I do these long uh, rides that also burn a lot of calories. And I have this new goal of doing Gibraltar Road, which is a famous climb in Santa Barbara. But I haven't really reached the fitness to do that. So that's, that's okay, my so next goal. Up. That's my next what, goal. How, how many, when you're road biking, give me a distance and time. So right now I'm, I'm slowly building up because you have to really work on um, your endurance mm-hmm. and efficiency. So right now I'm doing around 20 miles, 25 Ooh, miles. Okay. So Santa Barbara has a lot of hills, so I incorporate some hill climbing. Sure. So um, last weekend we did a, a thousand foot climb, yep. which took about um, uh, an hour or so. Okay. With my with my friend who r- we ride together for safety and for encouragement as well. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Good for you, man. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, I, w- I wanna I want you to put me through your your daily game plan. I mean, you put me through your daily game plan. Uh, I wanna, if you're hitting any push-ups or anything like that, what are you doing to get warmed up before biking? And sure. then I wanna, let's go on a bike ride. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I still do intermittent fasting, so uh, I don't eat breakfast anymore. Okay. Um, you know, I grew up with, with 
health professionals and I'm not sure if dietitians, but this is basically like repeated so many times that people think it's common knowledge, which is the breakfast is the most important yeah. meal of the day. Yeah. I'm not a breakfast guy myself. I'm not oh. sure if that was uh, a product of uh, General Mills and yeah, other exactly. breakfast yeah, products. Yeah, you're right? absolutely yeah. right. So I'm, my my girlfriend has it so set in her yeah. in her mind the breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yeah. And I've never been like that. I would just eat whenever I got hungry. Sure. But yeah. now she's started kind of I put me in a little bit of a cycle where I'm like, ah, oh, bagel with some cream cheese in the morning. Because I'm I was never really hungry in the morning, but Same. you're supposed to eat breakfast, yeah. so why don't we eat it anyway? Yeah. Right? So once you once you start eating, then yeah. the hunger comes in, I think, afterwards to a certain extent. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So um, intermittent fasting, no breakfast. Yep. Uh, lunch is uh, 11.30, and I, I, and I stop eating around 7.30. Okay, so I'm at just today. I'm almost there because I've only had one cost protein shake mm -hmm. um, and a few, a handful of nuts. Uh, <laughs> But that was it. So yeah. I'm I'm intermittent fasting in a way, but now it's three o'clock. So why don't we go get a workout in? Sure. Let's go get a session. Yeah. So I can eat because I'm dying. Great. <laughs> You're on. All right. That's game plan. All right. That sums it up. Uh, thank you, Dr. Young. My pleasure. Appreciate all your knowledge. We're gonna go get a bike ride in now in the hills of Santa Barbara. Hopefully, it doesn't kick my ass all over this town. All right. Till next time. <laughs> What's up guys, we're on Gibraltar Road. I'm with Dr. Young here. We are doing the docks game plan and this is one hell of a ride, man. My ass is already burning. Oh yeah. <laughs> You're bunking. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> we're going all the way to the ocean. Come on. <laughs>